I know a handful of you that subscribe to the channel are working on studying for your A plus certification exam as well as other IT exams. So I wanted to do a few more videos helping viewers on the more difficult to remember topics that in my personal experience have had multiple questions on the actual exams. Today, we're focusing on file systems, Windows, Mac, Linux, and optical media. Although in my experience, three quarters of the questions on the entry level CompTIA certifications will be asking you questions about Windows because that's what you'll encounter and need to know most in the actual field. So first up, we have Windows File Systems. We have NTFS, which stands for New Technology File System, and it is the default file system used by Microsoft Windows. It supports permissions-based security, symbolic links, compression, and encryption. NTFS is designed for use with large hard drives and supports file sizes up to 16 exabytes. It also allows for faster data access through read ahead functionality, making it suitable for use in enterprise environments. Additionally, NTFS supports snapshots, which allow for quick backups and restores. However, NTFS cannot be read or written to by most Linux or Mac OS systems. Next up, we have FAT32. So FAT32 stands for File Allocation Table 32 and is commonly used on USB drives, flash drives, and memory cards. It is a simple file system that does not support file sizes larger than four gigabytes. It is widely used because it's compatible with many operating systems, making it a good choice for transferring files between systems. It's also widely used on older computers and embedded devices. However, it does not support security or permissions, so it is not optimal for use in enterprise environments. XFAT or extended FAT is an improved version of the FAT12, FAT16, FAT32 file systems. It supports larger file sizes up to 256 terabytes, which makes it suitable for use with large data sets. XFAT also supports journaling, which helps prevent data loss in the event of a system crash and can also improve read and write performance. Additionally, XFAT is designed to be compatible with both Windows and iOS systems, making it suitable for use in environments where both systems are in use. Next up, we have the Apple File Systems, and we should start this with APFS, which stands for Apple File System and is the primary file system used on Mac OS systems. It supports data encryption, compression, and copy on write snapshots, making it well suited for use in enterprise environments. Next up, we have HFS Plus, which is the successor to HFS, which was phased out, I believe, like 25 years ago. HFS Plus stands for Hierarchical File System Plus. This is the legacy file system used in Mac OS X and is the default file system for internal hard drives. HFS Plus supports features such as journaling, ownership, and permissions, but it has limitations in terms of file size and performance. Most current Apple devices are going to be using APFS though. Next up, we have the Linux file systems. So there's actually a lot of Linux file systems. I believe on the current 2023 A plus exam, they say they only ask you about ext3 and ext4. I believe they also ask you about uh, XFS. So we're going to cover those. So first off, we have ext3, which is the third generation extended file system. It is a file system used primarily on Linux systems. It supports permissions, symbolic links, and journaling, which can help prevent data loss in the event of a system crash. ext3 also supports large file sizes, making it suitable for use with large data sets. However, it does not support compression, so it may not be optimal for use with compressed files. ext4, or the fourth generation extended file system, is the successor to ext3 as i'm sure you guessed it supports several improvements over ext3 including support for larger file sizes up to one exabyte more efficient allocation of disk space and increased efficiency for data operations ext4 also supports block sub allocation which can reduce file fragmentation and improve performance additionally ext4 is compatible with the trim command which can improve performance on solid state drives and the last Linux file system that we're going to discuss today, which they may or may not even ask you questions about, is XFS. So that stands for Extended File System. It is a high-performance file system designed for use with large data sets. It supports large file sizes and has good performance on write-intensive workloads. XFS is also optimized for use with solid-state drives and supports compression, encryption, and snapshotting. It's often used in high-performance computing and enterprise environments. So they may also ask you a question or two about the CDFS, which is the compact disk file system. I'm not sure that years from now, they're still going to be asking questions about this. They've kind of 
phase them out, but they may still ask you a question or two about it. Uh, so CDFS, Compact Disk File System, is a file system designed for use on CD-ROM disks. Its main features are read-only functionality, 8.3 file name limitation. Primary purpose is to enable the storage and organization of data on CD-ROM disks, such as music, videos, and other digital content. There's really so many more file systems like the B-Tree and the ISO 9660, but for the ITF, the A+, the entry-level certs, you really shouldn't need to know much more than this. I do want to give you guys some more information on the Windows file systems though because they ask more questions about those than anything else and it's not even close. So the technical specs for FAT32 file system is it was developed by Microsoft in 1993 and is the default file system for Windows 95, 98, and ME. It supports file sizes up to 4 gigabytes and is commonly used on USB drives, memory cards, and other removable media. It does not support file and folder permissions or ownership information, and it has a maximum partition size of 2 terabytes and a maximum disk size of 16 terabytes. Some tech specs now for NTFS, new technology file system. It was developed by Microsoft in 1993 as well, and is the default file system for Windows NT and Windows 2000. It supports file and folder permissions and security, symbolic links, hard links, file streams, and reparse points. I doubt that you're going to be asked about that. Here's a great resource from Microsoft.com to show you how the cluster size affects the largest volume and file size. Now some tech specs for XFAT, the extended file allocation table. It was developed by Microsoft in 2006 as a successor to FAT32 and is the default file system for Windows 7 and later. It supports file sizes up to 128 petabytes and is suitable for use with large data sets. It supports hard disk drives, memory cards, media devices, USB drives, and solid state drives. It does not support journaling or file system repair, but it does provide support for error detection and prevention to reduce risk of data loss. That should cover most of what you need to know about the file systems themselves. We did cover a few extra, which they don't say that they ask you about, but I do think that they might actually ask you about a couple of those. So hope this was helpful, and I will see you in the next one.